All the really important stuff is the very stuff the stupid people never consider, never talk about. I would rather pour molten lead on my bare feet than watch any of these goofy history channel or any of these other silly videos about UFOs. You know, so-and-so got abducted. You know, just, just a bunch of garbage and nonsense, a bunch of sensational. I saw a UFO and Granny saw it and it... And it, um, and it, uh, <laughs> it took the cows and it just, oh, manner of craziness. Uh, I, I just, I don't care about any of the conspiracy theory lunacy. I mean, you have to be one terminally unintelligent to think that of all the stars out there, even our own galaxy alone, much less the countless millions and millions of galaxies really really terminally stupid to think there aren't other entities out there would they be interested in human beings probably not especially if they have the ability of advanced field craft to come visit us it just i seriously doubt they would be interested i don't discount um extraterrestrial beings at all i certainly don't there seems to be palpable evidence of this and i'm not just talking about roswell but other places, but I don't give that a consideration. One thing I know for certain that is absolutely true, and a lot of people fail to understand that like Navy pilots or fighter jet pilots, these are not people on the inside. These are not people that are like test pilots for uh, Lockheed Martin or Skunk Works on black projects. They're not. I mean, these are conventional armed forces people, and even though they're uh, valuable military assets for the military industrial complex and the army the navy the air force or even space force these are not people that are on the inside that know what's going on as far as black projects or field propulsion craft they're just not some of the most advanced stuff that we think is so super advanced today was developed shortly after world war ii the 40s and the 1950s what we only first saw about it because it essentially been declassified you know, sometimes like 40, 50 years later, in the 1980s and the 1990s. Wow, that's so advanced. It looks like something out of Star Trek. It's like, oh yeah, we were working on that back in 1948, for example. Same is true of uh, these field propulsion crap. But I want to talk about the important stuff that none of these silly little either YouTube videos or these silly little history channel or what we have, Discovery Channel, these goofy little UFO documentaries and hearsay stuff talks about just some demonstrable stuff i don't know what the percentage is but surely so surely so somewhere around 95 percent or probably 100 percent of these craft are uh, government black project craft um, are they fundamentally originally backwards engineered you know i can't intelligently speculate about that but i can actually make some uh important statements which is threefold that i don't hear anybody else talking about regarding ufos and everybody's always want me to talk about ufos and i would not want to contribute endless blather and speculation about ufos the same as anybody else but rather talk about the stuff that we know is demonstrably true yet nobody else is talking about these would be a threefold um, these of course are field propulsion craft obviously so i've said that many times all of these craft actually follow the right-hand rule. One of the most spectacular ones, there's several like that. We can actually see uh, as a Navy fighter pilot, he was in, I think, near-infrared spectrum examining the craft. And you can actually see the corona. You can actually see these vectored corona around the craft, which have constructive and destructive interference between the corona around the craft due to the field. And these, of course, are field propulsion craft. And when it actually changed its vector, instantaneously the uh, corona around the craft changes i mean these are verified um, infrared uh, lockups on uh, these craft from uh, navy five why they were released who knows i wouldn't want to speculate about that but there, there are a few videos of this we're going to actually see corona around the craft and when the craft actually changes vectors or it speeds off nearly instantaneously at incredible speeds we can actually see these uh, vectored corona um, around the craft. One of the side effects is absolutely um, fascinating, but all these fundamental field craft must follow the right-hand rule, but the things that people aren't considering that's been documented many, many times 
by the most incredible sources, be they the airline pilots or Navy or Air Force people, that these uh, craft will literally go from like Mach 20 to dead stop and then do the same, go from dead stop to, you know, incredible, fantastical speeds. One of the things that's actually important, too, I want to talk about uh, power, but also, too, about uh, forward momentum. I've used the word inertia in its original context, of course, many times, but when you say inertia, people think of forward, moment, forward momentum or inertia, like when you hit your brakes in the car, you know, you lurch forward. And this, of course, is where your body in the car is trying to dissipate the energy imparted. I like to give a couple examples of that, like flywheel energy. There's uh, flywheel bearings for energy storage are incredibly inefficient, and they actually lose uh, between uh, the most efficient ones, which actually don't use regular bearings. They use magnetic bearings and they use carbon composites for energy storage. But they lose 20 to 50 percent of their energy storage um, after, I think, two hours, 20 to 50 percent after two hours, due to the Earth's rotation, which is a gyroscope's um, properties that it doesn't want to change uh, motion. It actually resists, and that itself is a type of friction. That's why these ultra-low friction, they're actually sealed inside of vacuum uh, chambers. We actually import energy to them, and this has been explored, except they're so incredibly inefficient due to the Earth's rotation. They're called uh, flywheel, flywheel generators. We can actually harvest energy from them. The energy, of course, is actually put into them, and we've looked at them for possible uh, super simple uh, energy storage devices um, for uh, extraterrestrial uh, craft, and I'm not referring to these UFOs. But the point is, and there are many videos of this, where they actually take a super heavy circular weight, put it on the end of a pole. This is the mystery of gyroscopes. There have been many videos about this, including Eric Lathwit. He made many, many adamant videos about uh, the magical properties of a gyroscope and yet no current scientist. We will say angular momentum. Angular momentum is a description, not an explanation. Then when you actually spin up, say, a weight that someone could never ever pick up, say 200 pounds on the end of a stick. But when you actually spin that weight up, the person can relatively easily pick it up. The only thing that's actually changed is you've imparted angular momentum and changed the vector of inertia. The byproduct of how these particular craft are able to uh, stop on a dime, say from Mach, Mach 20, without turning everybody inside into a mushy mess like they've been through a blender, is that uh, when these craft are actually surrounded by these uh, field energies that are the impetus for their incredible acceleration and instantaneous stopping on a dime, quite literally, which fascinates uh, the fighter pilots and the, uh, the Boeing aircraft uh, commercial pilots, they'll see these things incredible. They'll just stop and then they'll look at the other craft, seemingly so, and then instantaneously super accelerate. The byproduct of these field propulsion craft is that they actually remove the momentum of the mass of the beings that are inside, such that the entity, the living, uh, and these, of course, are black project uh, craft by the government 99 times out of 100. Is that speculation? Sure, it is, but they're definitely black project craft from the United States government or other government. I doubt there's another government. Uh, certainly not so China, certainly not so Russia. Whether these are back en backwards engineered originally or not, I certainly wouldn't want to speculate. But anyway, the necessary byproduct, and the wonderful byproduct, is not only these field propulsion craft, but actually removing the occupants from the momentum of uh, the field that they're in, like any person driving a car, for example, getting a car wreck, you know, you're going to wrap yourself around the steering wheel, which is why, of course, we have the airbags, the forward momentum. It removes the forward momentum and the inertia vector of the mass of the person that's inside. People talk about weights, like, well, weight is equal to this. Like, weight has actually seven different variables. Weight is location-specific, vector-specific, field-specific, and a few other very obscure ones. Like, save me, for example, I'm 250 pounds. Well, like, a four-year-old girl could never pick me up, right? Well, it's because you weigh 250 pounds, you fat tattooed uh, bald monkey. Yeah, but I mean, you stick me in the water and that same little person could move me around rather easily. My weight hasn't changed, but I'm actually in a different medium wherein I could easily be moved. Weight has these different variables. People think a weight is fixed. Here's a lead weight. It's like, well, it's fixed. It weighs, I think this is like a, a pound and a half weight. It weighs a pound and a half. As long as you don't change, it's pound up. 
Well, the weight changes. You put it in a specific displacement field, you're able, when you put it in the displacement field, in the case of a field propulsion craft, this means that its forward momentum inertia has been eliminated. That's how these, the byproduct of these field propulsion craft, a wonderful byproduct, you can imagine the wonderful attributes you can have of taking a craft and go from like Mach 20 to dead stop without splattering everybody on the inside is just absolutely wonderful. It's incredible. It's fantastic. The most important thing that I don't hear anybody else talking about these UFO, which is absolutely fantastic, is that which is driving them. There's absolutely nothing on this earth, advanced or crude or otherwise, that can provide the energy that these field uh, propulsion craft require. This means, and also too, it would be super, super massive even to supply a small vehicle. This means that these craft absolutely, 100%, undeniably so, use some form of zero-point energy. I've actually talked about uh, free harvest of energy using uh, the phase disparity of the magnetic field to draw energy out of inertia, or you could say the ether, you could say zero-point energy. I don't care what words you use. More fascinating to me than these... Uh, than these field propulsion craft, or what people conventionally call UFO, because, like I said, easily, aliens, we're not that interesting. Any advanced civilization has field propulsion craft, and we have field propulsion craft. We're not that interesting <laughs> to these so-called advanced aliens, most of which are far, far, far too, way too distant to know about ignorant human beings on the planet Earth. Like, hey, there's some super primitive, uh, hairless monkeys on a planet, like, a gazillion light years away. Why don't we go waste our time looking at the... <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's just stupid. But I don't dismiss the fact that some of these are backwards engineered craft uh, that have landed here. I don't certainly dismiss that idea. But surely nearly 100% of these are ultra advanced, uh, top, top secret, beyond top secret actually. Not only are they, some of the stuff I've heard that is beyond top secret isn't listed anywhere. It operates off of a shadow government under Skunk Works uh, or Lockheed Martin or Martin Marietta and really, really obscure places that you and I will basically never heard about. People keep talking about Area 51. Uh, there's places in southern Idaho. There's places in Colorado. There's places in Montana. There's more than a few. But more important than the craft, because you just feel propulsion craft, is the energy source that these are operating off of. Absolutely incredible. Once again, the inertia cancellation is, of course, a necessary side effect since it takes the mass out of the equation. This super powerful energy source that is actually propelling, you know, excuse me, providing the energy for these uh, field propulsion craft and the incredible corona that's produced around them is fascinating. But isn't it amazing that the inertia cancellation is a necessary byproduct of isolating yourself from the rest of uh, the vectored momentum in the universe because weight, like I said, weight does have seven variables. Location, spe location specific, for example, you take an object that weighs one pound, weighs one pound right here. If you instantly change its location to say 50 miles above the earth, its weight, what we call weight, you know, put it on a scale, its weight instantly changes. So it's location specific, vector specific, field specific, and a few other very obscure variables. People think weight is fixed. Weight is a weight is a weight. It's kilogram here, it's kilogram. No, that's not the case. This is a misunderstanding and misapprehension of most human beings as to what is the field nature of weight, so-called gravity. There's absolutely no branch of science, and I'm proud of them at least for admitting this. They will tell you flat out, we still don't know what gravity is. It's a mystery. They, they do say that, by the way. They don't understand what gravity is. So you have a field propulsion craft with the super, super glorious uh, attributional byproduct of eliminating out angular momentum and isolating the mass inside of the craft from the rest of the universe, which means you can super accelerate and stop on a dime and vice versa. Look up, by the way, flywheel uh, energy source or uh, gyroscopic... Uh, People say, well, that's just angular momentum, you know. It's like, no, there, you, before there's a 300-pound weight on the end of a pole. You can't lift it up no matter what you do, but you spin it up. It's still the exact same mass, but you've changed its attributional nature so that now you can lift it up while it's under high rotational gyroscopic speed. 
So that's the byproduct of these field propulsion crafts, as they eliminate out forward momentum. Wonderful. When the military first discovered that, who knows, 50s or the 40s or the 60s, that must have been like a wet dream to them. Like, oh my God, we got a field propulsion craft that could go anywhere on the earth and can stop on a dime and people inside won't be splattered. But more important than that, as I understand how the field propulsion craft, you know, the fundamentally, the principle, because everything operates off of the right-hand rule. Everything. Is that to generate those type of fields around the craft requires a power source that is completely beyond the kin, that's kin, K-I-N, beyond the kin of anything that we currently have. I'm way more interested not in the mechanics of the field propulsion craft rather than the energy source that's actually driving them because it is, the, that's the only way. It can't be radioactive, it can't be, it can't be any type of explosion technology energy source that we have. It actually has to be some form of zero-point energy source. That's the only thing that could provide that incredible, it would take the power of a small city to power the corona and the field displacement around the craft to cancel it out, its cancel, cause the cancellation of its weight and mass. So. I'm way more interested in the power source that actually drives those. Like if you're able to step inside of it, I wouldn't even want to look at the vectored field hardware that drives the corona around the craft. I'd want to look at the power source. <laughs> these are the considerations that nobody gives when they talk about these so-called UFOs. The UFO, of course, is as loaded as the word ghost. Instead of tell people, instead of saying ghost, why don't you say what they really are, a disembodied being? Instead of calling these UFOs and thinking about weird little aliens and stuff, you should be thinking about black project human beings inside of them, which is exactly what is inside of them. You should be thinking about you know, something that is above the level of explosion tech. Boeing aircraft currently, it's all explosion tech. They're burning jet fuel. Everything we have, us human beings, is explosion tech. You talk about field propulsion tech, field tech. The problem with field tech is it requires super incredible amounts of power, the likes of which doesn't exist in any form here on Earth. Even the most efficient, highest energy output devices doesn't exist. These craft to maintain that require something like uh, four lightning strikes worth of uh, amperage transfer per every uh, few seconds somewhere around the order of, you know, to put it in simple or layman's terms, four lightning strikes worth of, uh, of amperage and uh, voltage every few seconds. We don't have anything like that uh, here conventionally on Earth. We do, but they're a black project. That would actually cause a complete revolution and an upheaval. If that type of power source were to get out and how to build one, it would completely overthrow the entire Earth. I don't think people realize what percentage of the U.S. economy and how many endless hundreds of millions of people are involved in the production of energy, the transportation of energy, the control of energy. It would just change, it would, it would upheaval, cause upheaval of the entire Earth instantaneously overnight. But that technology does exist because that is the only thing that is driving those field propulsion craft. There is no generator, no power source conventionally that we know of that can cause that type of uh, enormous uh, coronal energy to take advantage of the right-hand rule in what we conventionally call these field propulsion craft or what normal human beings call UFOs. I don't like to talk about UFOs and aliens. Let's just talk about technology and rational science. Anyway, something to consider. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Read every comment, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Goodbye.